Hi guys, I'm back with another video. This is Crafty Date with Daisy and Meggie. I'm doing this collaboration with uh, Megan Blethen. She's Crafty Meggie here on YouTube. And I'm starting this layout with... Uh, what I'm trying to do is use mixed media. And I'm not very... I'm not going to say I'm not very good at it. But I'm not very good at it. But I just started using... I don't dabble in mixed media a whole lot, I guess. And uh, before this goes any further, I did show the sketch that I'm, that we're going to use. We're going to pick a sketch. I picked the first one. I did a re land graph. And I picked this one because it seemed easy. And I think I just made it way more complicated than it had to be. <laughs> so this is my first, like, real, quote unquote, attempt in mixed media. Um, I am using... A bunch of different stuff. I'm using this gesso that's about 10 years old and it still works pretty decently. I started off with that orange paper that's from the Hey Boy collection from Basic Gray. So it's a few years old. And uh, I'm using this thick, it's not thick, what is it called? It is thick but I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, it's called a paint writer and it's heavy body, not thick, heavy body acrylic. And it's in the color ca cadmium yellow. And it's from the Brie Reese. I got them on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And that blue one is also a Brie Reese um, brand. And that was the modeling paste in a glossy dimension in the color ultramarine blue. So what I wanted to do was make yellow and blue stars. And they didn't really come out. And the paint kind of seep through on some of the stars and so here I'm trying to paint with some white paint and uh, over the modeling paste and it just becomes this real big ordeal with the stars I think um, or my take on the whole thing is that I maybe I should have just left well enough alone but then it just got more more and more complicated as I went through the process which you'll see here I did a uh, layer my photo which is of my darling son when he was little. He's eight now, but he's around three three years old here. And um, wearing his favorite hat. And he, I used, I backed up the picture with some of the Crepe Paper Cute Kid collection. I think it's called Cute Kid. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, Cool Kid, not cute. Cool. And uh, here I'm using the one of my favorite punches. It's the Notebook Punch. And I hope this... Uh, I don't sound like I'm too all over the place, even though this was a hot mess, this layout. <laughs> For me, in my experience, <laughs> I take long in making layouts. And so this was just even longer. This was a two and a half hour process for me, you guys. At least that's what the footage in the video says. So, And that's even because I stopped and started it. Here I'm gluing different pieces of pattern paper because I wanted it to be. I wanted it to look like Eureats. I wanted it to look like I was inspired by Eureats layout, but I did my own take on it. I uh, am not a avid white base paper page user. Did that make sense? I don't know. In my head it did. Um, I love using the pattern paper because I have so much of it. I buy a bunch of paper pads. I have several of them. I have not used uh, one single one up I believe and so I love using the pattern paper so I wanted to give this a dreamy feel uh, even though he's it's not a sleeping picture uh, something uh, with an air of imagination a whimsy if you will and so I had this idea in my head to use the gesso and then use the different color paints of course um, I use the orange paper because it's his favorite color and then I wanted to play into the the patterns and the different textures that Irit had on the opposite side of the page, actually. And so I did it and flipped it, and then I did my own take on the actual um, paste. Of uh, She used pink butterflies, and of course I'm making a boy layout because I have sons. And not I think she did a girl layout on hers. It's a picture of her and her daughter, I believe. So here I'm using this leftover Christmas... Uh, foam thing and I took the the thin parts of the foam structure to use as an actual layering piece because I didn't 
I felt like it was wasteful if I didn't use it for something else. So I repurposed it for dimensional foam. So here you see me gluing um, after I had done more yellow stars because I felt like it was just blue and then a bunch of jumbled mess because it didn't come out like I didn't execute it the way I wanted it to. So I ended up with yellow and blue and greenish yellow stars. And I'll go in there, and I think that's what took the longest, is trying to fix all that messiness. Because some of the paint seeped through, and I had to fix that with white paint. And then here I needed more stars. Here you see me using these Heidi Swamp dyes. And they just, as I was picking the fonts for, for the... Um, uh, for the thickers, I just, it didn't work for me. I didn't like the look of the, even though her, even though Heidi Swamp's uh, dies, they have a whimsical uh, font. I just didn't feel like they went or they were getting lost too much in the background. So I wanted something else to pop and I felt like these were more um, age appropriate, I guess. Uh, to me, they lend more to the whimsy and they play on the... Uh, the silver, I'm using a silver metallic and a blue foil uh, uh, background to those fonts. They have white letters on them. So as I was putting them down, I did like the look of them, but I felt like they were getting lost in the white. The white was getting lost in the white uh, gesso. So I tried to make a shadow for them and I said, well, if this is supposed to play on like the sky, why don't I make it dark? So then I started doing that. I did use this Brie Reese um, ink. It's like a it's like a shimmer ink, but it's got paint. It's not transparent. But I did put some in this uh, inkwell thing. What is it called? I don't know right now. Uh, and I diluted it with some water. They're glitter brushes, and I also bought those in on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And the one that I'm using is a Mars black color. And it had a lot of shimmer. It does have a lot of shimmer. And uh, so here, I was just trying to outline. I was trying to make a shadow at first. And then I said, oh, I'm going to outline them. And the more that I did it along the words, I realized that it looked kind of just odd. So I said, so in my thought process, I also realized that I didn't want to color over the color that I just made with the paint. So then I started carefully <laughs> coloring over and I went back and I tried to clean off the watercolor paint off of the stars since they were out of acrylic and the water watercolor I can pick up uh, with a cloth. And then I went back and added more white paint. It was just the process of going back and forth and back and forth. And I think I would have executed, like, executed this differently um, had I known this type of process. So next time it would have been white gesso, then the black spot, and then the colored paint with the stencil um, over that and not the other way around and back and forth into the situation. But I didn't, I had an idea in my head. I just didn't know how to execute it. And now this is why this uh, collaboration is so much fun for me because I'm a, this is the kind of stuff that I want to learn and you can see as many videos as you want and until you're blue in the face, until you feel like you're knowledgeable in the area that you want to learn. But until you try it out is when you're truly going to see um, what you are really capable of doing or what the mediums are capable of doing really and what you want them to do and how you will get through that process as you're working with them. So if you want to try this and you're afraid to do it, just do it because Everybody says that, but until you really try it is the only way you're going to learn. I moved my stickers around a lot because of the, the way that I wanted them to look across the page. And so when the moves, stickers got moved, some of the stars were still uh, under over white paint only. And so I had to go back and do the watercolor paint back and forth and let them dry and yada, yada, yada. So um, I did try to use up some of my stash and I have these uh, primary colored chipboard stickers from Mambi. I recently picked up these uh, pack of stickers from Sticko at Walmart actually and they're a pack of everyday stickers. They they say boy icon 
sticker pad. They have like three sheets of each. It's 18 sheets in all. And I think they're like doubled or tripled. But I like the colors and it's a lot of boyish things. And I don't have... It's always easier to find girl things than it is boy things. Here I'm trying to put this rocket out. But I just didn't like the, the look of it at the end. And I'm trying to use up stickers pretty much. But I don't know when to say when. And I think I like that style. I like how it looks. And so I just went for it and added more and more until I decided that enough was enough. And I kind of like the outlook of it. I'm happy with it considering that it's my first real multimedia, mixed media type of piece. Um, I did add buttons with twine, as you'll see in some of the close-ups. Um, if you want to pause the video, but my last picture doesn't show the updated version of the buttons. <laughs> this was a hot mess, y'all, but this is my first collab. I'm really happy to have done this with Crafty Megan. Go check her video out. I will have it in the link below. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up. Comments and questions if you have any down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the third Friday of every month, I believe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!